Whilst visiting Villiers, I overheard a conversation. They've got a few special edition bikes kicking around, so I thought I'd go in and try and find them. But before I do that, make sure that you subscribe to the GCN Tech channel and also click the little notification bell so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. Right, now that you've done that, we can go in. Come on, let's go and find them. That's right, you know full well if there's some old bikes around, I'm going to be pretty close to them. And well, I've just walked into a few here on display at Villiers. Uh, first up, this old Villiers Cento of Damiano Cunegos. I'm guessing it's from mid to late 2000s, just judging by the group set on there and also the wheels and the colour scheme and everything. The first thing that strikes me about this is the sheer size, really, of the actual seat stays. If you look at them, they are absolutely ginormous in their depth. The width, not too bad, but it's just kind of the, the rounded shape of them. These days we tend to see really slimmed down ones. Uh, and it's just also the big cutout here. Uh, no wishbone seat stay, which was quite popular back then too. Now they've obviously swapped the wheels over from what he was racing on, on the bike, because we've got some carbon pads in there. And of course, as you will all know, I don't recommend using that with aluminium wheels, but hey, we've got a real piece of history here. The cassette, 1123. 39.53, so these days we tend to see 39.28 as the ratios. Um, but back then, it was almost unheard of really to have anything lower than a 23 sprocket. Some really cool details on the top tube, which I've noticed as well, is we've got a, a man and woman and a little baby as well there. And then we've got uh, 1981, Canago's year of birth, his height and also his weight on there. These little bits of customization you don't tend to find on anyone else's bikes other than a team leader or a national champion, that sort of thing. Saddle as well, pretty much slammed back, um, not really central in the rails, not as extreme as some bikes we tend to see, but yeah, there's just not really much integration going on back then because there just wasn't really the desire for it, it would seem. Now, something really neat and quite different about this bike is the fact it's got a chorus front derailleur on there, so we haven't got record on. Plus, mounted onto the front derailleur mount, we've got a homemade chain catcher. Now, I know these are homemade for a fact because I remember meeting the mechanic and him and also the mechanic from Quickstep at the time were making them themselves to go onto the bikes and he even gave me one, so I'm pretty lucky to have that and uh, I'll have to try and dig mine out one day just to prove it because I do have one of those. Nice, homemade fabrication, great. Oh my word, check this one out. One of Marco Pantani's bikes himself. Uh, now, the nickname, obviously, the Pirates. We've got, we've got the Pirate on the, on the top tube already. We've also got this very special saddle. I remember having one of these. I really do hope I've still got it somewhere. It's gonna be covered in mold in the loft, but from my hazy memory, I'm pretty sure I never ever sold it. Now, it's a fully integrated saddle. I'm gonna try and explain it. So the actual shell and the rails are all built into one out of plastic, and then they are reinforced with a little bit of metal around them. It was so futuristic at the time, I had to go out and buy one. To be honest, it was absolutely so uncomfortable and it put me in total agony, but everyone else was jealous, so I was pretty happy with that. And being a bike tech lover, even back then, I was so happy. Uh, now I say even back then, this bike I guess is from probably the mid to late 90s, uh, at an estimate, because I remember getting that saddle in about 97, I'd say. Now we've got a really long stem on here. Pantani wasn't a big guy. Um, you know, I just remember it was looking absolutely minuscule compared to everybody else. The um, frame looks almost too big for him. But look how much seat post we've got out, hardly anything. Remember, this was before the actual sloping geometry and compact frame sets were around. It's built out of Eastern Aluminium, 7005. Uh, this stuff generally was built in the USA or it was sourced from there, the Eastern uh, tube sets. We've got there a number, mate. You don't see these anymore on bikes. You lot at home, you don't know what you're missing out on. You used to get yourself a number and it would go inside of this little grub screw that would go in there, it would just slot in place, no zip ties or anything like that. The downside with this, I've got one of these on an old Eddie Merckx, is that um, they used to quite often corrode this aluminium, the salt and everything, when you're dripping sweat down, it would corrode and wear away. We've also got a cover here on the, uh, on the, on the brake, on the inner brake 
cable there for the rear brake. It's quite unusual almost because most pros, well, they don't pay for their bikes. They're not necessarily caring that much, but of course that's gonna cut down on any noise possibly rattling on there and also stop any grime getting in there, giving poor braking. These wheels, they wouldn't have been as race wheels, but certainly a pair of training wheels. And well, we've got tied and soldered spokes here. If you look at, I love the craftsmanship when someone does this. The couple there that, you know, maybe it was a Friday afternoon with the sun, really good. You can see the strands of that wire going around. Ambrosio Excellence rims. These were really hard to get hold of as a kid when I was growing up. I really wanted to get them, but um, yeah, they just didn't seem to, be that popular. So they're clinchers, that's why I say they weren't these race wheels, because you can see they're the tyres. Panaracer tyres, they used to make some really top-end tubulars. Cassette, check that out, 1121, Shimano Dior Ace. Yeah, that's right, 1121, 3921. 3928, modern day equivalent. Nah, nah, not for Pantana, he just dealt with it. This old Shimano Dior Ace group set, I think this was the first Dior Ace group set I ever had. Uh, sealed cartridge bottom bracket, but was adjustable. There was angular contact bearings in there, and there was uh, a lock ring, and also an adjusting cup inside of the sealed unit. It was quite a, a weird bit of kit, really. Uh, most people tended to replace them with an Ultegra one that wasn't adjustable and tended to last a bit longer. But yeah, this was the Octolink one, which is now being superseded by the Holotech 2. We got a carbon fork, but I mean, look how skinny it is. Look at it, it looks like it's, you know, totally and utterly slimmed down. Dior-Ace headset. So, we've got Dior-Ace headset cups, but the top cap, where it would normally be a dior one, this was when A headsets were starting to become popular as well with road cyclists. We were very late to adopt the technology from, from mountain bikers. So we've got an A headset top cap from Diacomp, who of course uh, patented or invented the whole, the whole situation there, the whole product. It's really weird not to see a Shimano Dior Ace one, but I don't think they ever made one. In fact, I'm pretty sure that that is just a Dior Ace upper cup and that the two adjusting uh, races are not in place. You've got the locking nut and then the uh, adjustable one. They've just removed them. Lovely bike that, absolutely love it. Oh, look at this. Right, Igor Astaloa, world champion, 2003 Hamilton in, uh, in Canada. I remember that. My parents went. This wasn't the bike from that season because he was riding for Seiko, the Italian team, coffee, coffee machine manufacturer. Um, anyway, the next year, an interesting story about this one. 2004, then, when this bike is from, because the previous year he was on a different brand. But 2004, he rode up until April for Cofidis and after that, Lamprey. So I don't know which team this is from. Uh, I would probably say Cofidis, because I reckon Lamprey would have been on Campagnolo. Just, just, a, just a thought, I should know, I know, but hey, give me a break. It's a long time ago. Um, so yeah, we've got a full Shimano Dior Ace group set. This is the 7800 one. Uh, when we've already looked at a bike previously with this really elegant looking chain set, I loved it. It was just so beefed up. We hadn't seen anything like it up until then. Uh, 10 speed, like I said, we got a really close ratio in there too. I think it's a 21, might be a 23, can't see. There's a little bit of surface rust forming. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this bike, I don't know why it's got these wheels on it. Zentis carbon wheels, and I'm pretty sure he would never ever have used them. But I do like the way this bike's been done. I like the silver, you know, the silver effect on the carbon there. It's got a few war wounds where it's obviously being bashed around and stuff like that as a pro's bike is. We've got also his name on top of the saddle there, flight saddle, Selkoff seat post, kind of matching a little bit with the silver carbon. External cables though still from what, 2004? Yeah, they got hidden away in about 2008 with the, the generation that replaced this group set. But yeah, you can see straight away the carbon fork compared to that bike of Pantani, it's been really beefed up. Again, no internal cables here on the down tube. That was something which nobody really wanted, but uh, oh, I like this one too. I just I don't like those wheels, got to be said. Oh, now we're talking, right. Uh, a time trial bike of Marco Pantani. Not really renowned for his uh, racing against the clock, but I think we should definitely check it out. We've got sort of slightly aero looking tubes here. We've got a, quite a funky design on the the seat tube where it goes super narrow really compared to the, 
main bit here where the back wheel is getting a bit closer in, of course, trying to aid in and then enhance the aerodynamics. The down tube, that takes almost like a triangular shape to it, if you like. We've got a titanium bottle cage on there just to save a little bit of weight. Interesting too here is that it's held on with screws, it's like a flathead screw, rather than an Allen key. We got the Dura A 7700 group set, again from the mid 90s. Uh, we got a 54 outer chain ring as well, paired up with what looks to be a 39 inner. That 54 doesn't look like it's come from the same group set because from memory, the outer one was just like the inner in terms of its finish and everything. And the mechanic, well, obviously didn't have as keen eye for detail as me because there's a little arrow there. That arrow should actually be behind the crank. But hey, Pantani, uh, he had a, a bit of a better cycling career than me, so I can't really complain about that. Uh, we've also got a super short, look how short that front neck cable is. It's been trimmed all the way, all the way down. It couldn't be any shorter. Uh, back one, obviously, you know, pretty standard. We've got 1123 cassette on there too. These wheels, I've never actually heard of Eolic or anything. We've got a Veloflex record tubular on there. This is the sort of thing actually normally you'd use on a track because they're super, super fragile. We've got like a silk sidewall, I think, on there too. Uh, same saddle as like on his other bike we've already checked out. The cockpit though, we start to get a little bit interesting here. It's a bit higgledy-piggledy, if I can say that. It doesn't really make sense or translate into any other language, but it's a bit of a bit, a bit busy, we're going to say. Um, first up, we've got some adjusting, adjustable bolts on the, the sort of lower part of the handlebar. And presumably, if I was to loosen those, I'm not going to. Uh, the, this extension here, you could move slightly. Uh, they probably came in different lengths and everything. And likewise, we've got another bolt here for these ones. Now, the bar end shifters don't appear to be from the same era either. When pros start to go on time trial bikes, they do all sorts of strange and weird things with their tech. Um, and I enjoy looking at them probably more than anything because you find all these weird little things such as the, the elbow pads or forearm pads here. They've been cut in half or not really in half, probably they've had a third removed from them. I don't know, I, I can't think why it would ever be done, but probably save some extra weight or something. Um, but I just love it because the the diameters on all these things are so small because it was using a one inch style A head uh, stem. We've also got, again, a bit of, that's actually hand painted on there. That's beautiful, no decals, nothing like that. Uh, now to keep the, the, the brake cables here in place, as opposed to using uh, black insulation tape, which is the go-to really for most mechanics, and the cables aren't in rooted internally, not a lot of room really necessarily, They've just used sellotape on there so they don't spoil the beautiful yellow and the uh, Mercatone Uno uh, decals which have been again applied, they're kind of like a water decal that's been applied there, not, not painted on or anything. Um, and just check out this. So we've got a magnet here for the computer, zip tied on. Can you imagine in the era of marginal gains if a pro was to do that now? No, nor can I. They would be absolutely destroyed on social media, wouldn't they? By all the people out there wondering about aero games. Just notice as well, a yellow and red split fork. It reminds me of like a, a jester's outfit or something. Yeah, and interestingly too, it's a 26 inch front wheel on here, so, or a 650C. Um, so that's basically how riders tended to try and get super aero, was by putting a smaller front wheel on to lower their frontal area. And it's a Michelin service course tubular. No, never had one of those, that's for sure. That's lovely. Classic. All these old pro bikes are pretty cool, let's face it, but there is a couple of other bikes I just quickly want to show you because, well, I'm pretty jealous of any kid who got to ride the first one. Oh, yes. Check out this. Now, if I was a kid, this in the 70s would have been an absolute dream. Imagine it, a little child wanting to be like mama or papa and have a cool bike. Well, we've got a mini Villier here in that Ramata style paintwork. So in case you're unaware, the Ramata paintwork is done through chroming the frame and then you add through electrolysis a thin copper translucent style paint, which gives it this cool finish. Now this bike, believe it or not, has tiny little wheels. I'd say they're 20 inch. They've got tubular tires on them. That's right, so we've got a pair of Clement tubulars. Obviously, it is from the 70s. They're 
perishing somewhat, but it's got a down tube uh, shifter there for Campagnolo, four speed freewheel, and well, it's actually got Campagnolo hubs on there too. It's Nuovo record on this bike. We've got a fluted seat post, kind of pantographed if you like as well. So uh, manufacturers, they used to shave off little bits and then fill them in with color just to try and make them look a little bit cooler too. Uh, now, interesting about this one is that the brakes aren't cabled up the Italian way. So maybe it was destined for me as a child, although it was before I was born. Uh, we've got a matching pump as well. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, look at that. How nice is that? Everything on the bike has been done with such thought, including trying to make it a little bit lighter so that the youngsters could climb up the hills easier by drilling out the chain ring, saving a little bit of weight. The brakes have also been drilled out too, as have the actual brake levers. I love this. This is what I would dream of. I know I've said it, but I'm gonna keep saying it. Let me take this one home. Here we go, the final bike, a wooden one, would you believe? Uh, I don't really know too much about it, but I saw it hanging about, so I thought I'd shove it off too. I would quite like to ride this one. Let me know though, which of these bikes has been your favorite to check out? I love it when they let me well, rummage around inside of an old museum or some old stock rooms. It's amazing what you can find. Get involved in the comment section. Also, who would you like me to go and visit next? Don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Now for two more absolutely great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here. See you soon.